consent to address the House. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As Vice Chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, I want to highlight some of the ongoing work uh, our caucus, our colleagues, uh, CHC, uh, and with its working group on migrant families. Last month, in anticipation of the elimination of Title 42, uh, a Trump-era measure, uh, our working group sat uh, to work and develop recommendations that were subsequently submitted uh, to Secretary Mayorkas, outline, outlining the CHC's proposals to protect uh, the values of our nation, the rights of immigrants, asylum seekers, the rights of families to enter our country and make their case before government as they flee political violence, as they flee gang violence, as they flee food insecurity, as they flee environmental crises that forces perhaps a mom to take her three children and walk for thousands of miles to our border. Mr. Speaker, immigration is not a matter that is exclusive of the United States of America. It is a worldwide matter. And mothers across the planet are often forced, and families are often forced because of violence, because of war, because of environmental crisis, because of food insecurity, to seek a better life for their and their children. So we submitted a, a series of recommendations to Secretary Mallorca. Among them, the first one was not to resort back to the family detention model that was perpetrated during the Trump administration. This model we know and experts feel scars children, some of them for life. We saw the photos and the images of children incarcerated in cages during those days. And those children, experts feel, could be scarred and traumatized for life. So we asked Secretary Mayorkas not to resort back to the family detention model, and we were happy to see that he did that. Next uh, in our series of proposals was to grant and continue to grant the parole program for Cubans, Nicaraguans, Haitians, and Venezuela. Mr. Speaker, there is a crisis of democracy in the Western Hemisphere, and in this chapter of history, it's not characterized by a left-leaning government crisis or a right-leaning government crisis. It is impacting countries on both ends. And so it is prudent and appropriate to grant those that are fleeing political violence, whose lives are in danger, as we grant to Ukrainians that come to the border and other folks that are fleeing, fleeing political violence and escaping murder, the opportunity to make their case for asylum. So we were happy to see that that program will continue and provide a legal pathway for those seeking asylum. Though several elements of that particular program may not necessarily be the best, but it is one that provides that path, a legal path, of access to the United States government to make their case for asylum. I further applaud Mr. Mallorca's efforts to implement a new program that basically applies for citizens of El Salvador, Colombia, Honduras, and Guatemala. It provides the ability to have family reunification. We often hear time and time again how family values are an integral part of America. And that when families are together, our nation is stronger. When families are divided, our nation is weaker. So this particular program will assist 
in bringing through legal pathways again, providing family reunification efforts and abilities for people, uh, citizens of El Salvador, Colombia, Honduras, and Guatemala. These are all, both very good programs. Mr. Speaker, I think Gentlemen's this is a step in the right direction. I'll yield back the remaining part of my time.